All right. Well, welcome everybody to January's 2022 Community Challenge Recap. Uh, for those of you who have never participated in one of our Community Challenges, or if this is your first time participating, or if you've never attended one of our recaps each month within the eLearning Designers community, we all participate in a different challenge. And it's a way for folks to apply not only their technical skills, but graphic design skills, and all sorts of interesting and fun ways that hopefully help people put skills into practice and grow and all of that great stuff. So for this month's community challenge, for the month of January, we focused on designing custom icons and graphics in PowerPoint. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves in the whole world is when people try to claim that PowerPoint isn't you know, a professional tool or it's not a tool that you can use for things other than, you know, uh, shoving bullet points down the throats of your learners. PowerPoint is, I think, in my opinion, one of the most versatile tools uh, that anybody can have in their toolbox. And not only because it can do so much, but it's because it's easy to use. Most people already know how to use it. And most people have access to it. And when it comes to anything related to the different programs we use, it's not really the tool. Uh, it's the techniques that you're applying, right? And sometimes the best graphic design tool is the one that you know how to use. And there's this really great quote um, that I heard once that, you know, blaming PowerPoint for bad graphic design would be like blaming Microsoft Word for bad instructional design. It's not the tool you use, it's the techniques you apply. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to take a look at all of this month's, uh, all of the submissions for this month. And then uh, I'll play around in PowerPoint and show you how I use PowerPoint for uh, doing things like creating custom graphics and icons, all right? Now, if you happen to be watching this recording on YouTube, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and the bell button so you can get alerted the next time we publish um, our, our next community challenge or any content on YouTube, all right? So let me jump into sharing my screen. Give me one moment. All right, so I'm here in the eLearning Designers community. I've pinned a comment there where you can all, if you wanted to come out and check out all the submissions. I have to tell you everybody, like this, uh, you know, we've only been doing the challenges for a couple months now. And uh, I was really shocked <laughs> uh, in a good way. I was elated by how many um, people participated in this month's challenge. I mean, out of all of the different posts we have here in the community. I mean, we have 162 people comment. So uh, I'm not going to go in these in any particular order. And we're just going to go through them and see what some folks uh, shared. And then I'll jump into uh, PowerPoint and share some of the things that I like to do in it. Um, so, you know, Maria shared this. With, Maria was the first person who shared her uh, icon uh, in the community challenge. And this is a really great example of a simple, simple, simple icon. And so what I did is I challenged her to keep creating more icons in that style. Um, and that's the thing that I love so much about using PowerPoint for graphic design is once you put together a few shapes, then, uh, and you've created a simple icon, then start building upon it, start creating more or start um, creating versions with different color palettes or ones that are just outlined so you can use them in different contexts. So we can see Maria did a few different ones here using, uh, you know, again, different basic shapes and combining some existing shapes that you can get off PowerPoint. We'll take a look at that. I shared this with Maria here as well uh, about, you know, one of the things to, to consider doing if you did participate is, you know, if you designed an icon like this where it has the outlines and the fill, well, there might be instances where you don't want it to have the fill color. Maybe you want it to be like monochromatic, right? And so maybe try doing different styles that can be used in different contexts. You see this often with like logos. You see a color version of a logo and a black and white version of a logo. Uh, and that's so that it can be used in different ways. All right. Uh, Leanne shared her icons. Uh, I think they're, they're, they're educational icons or just a different mix of e-learning icons. Uh, what I really like about what Leanne did, and, and you'll see this in a lot of the other icons, um, that folks created is I, I think Leanne did a really good job using some really subtle drop shadows to uh, uh, give it a little bit of a 3D effect. Uh, and one of the things I noticed people started doing, I wasn't sure why people started doing it. And then I realized I went back and looked at my video is because I was doing it, <laughs> was putting the color palette uh, on the slide as well, which can be really helpful when you are creating different icons to have the color palette available. So thanks, Leanne, and thanks, Maria, as well. 
All right, let's keep going. All right, Sarah shared her icons. She used Pantone's Color of the Year, which is very awesome, or Colors of the Year for 2019, 2022. And she created a series of different icons. What I liked what uh, Sarah did is some of them have like a square, some of them are round, you know, different shapes. That's the other thing too. When you're creating icons, maybe you want them to have what I call, I don't know what it's technically called, but I call it like the foundation of the icon, whether it's a circle or square, um, in this case, like a, a diamond shaped, or, you know, if you have something like a, a clipboard here, you, you may not even need that, right? And it's, again, it's another way that you can edit those to be used in different contexts. Thanks, Sarah. All right, Allison created her icons. I'm gonna go ahead and download Allison's whole file here so we can take a look at them. Open those up in PowerPoint. Here we are. So she created a small series of icons. I, this is a great example where you don't need a whole lot of colors either. Like she just used two colors, which makes it you know really adaptable. You could take this uh, color here and um, you know change the fill color and, and create different icons. So we have a phone, um, a location marker, LinkedIn. Oh, I like that. Uh, and some files. Very good. I'll close that here now. Thanks, Allison. All right. And I'm going quick because we had a lot of submissions, so I want to make sure there's time. Um, all right. So uh, Louise McFadden, um, I, again, created different icons, same icons, but different styles. She put those on her portfolio, so we'll open that up and check them out. Uh, oh, and she did a whole video too. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see this. Make a presentation, make a pretty presentation. Oh wait, I think you, I knew this. I, I think you added this. Uh, I don't know if you edited this in Camtasia. Um, All right, so it looks like she started with a color palette. Good. And she has some names there. So she wanted to create a concept, a research, a timeline, and a future icon. I like that. Okay, I'm going to pause this here. I don't, I'm not going to play the whole two minutes, but what I do like about this, um, and Jacob, I don't... I, Apologies to put you on the spot, but Jacob Broadhead recently just shared a time-lapse video on LinkedIn showing how he created some additional graphics. And what I like about doing this beyond just creating the icons, um, this is a really great way of working out loud. And I, I should be doing this more. Like there's always times where I've created something and I'm like, oh, I should have recorded my screen. But this is a great example where you're working out loud, you're showing people your process, right? And you're sharing it with others and maybe somebody learns from it. Or maybe somebody who's looking for somebody who has video skills sees your video skills, right? This is a great example of what it what it means to work out loud and sharing your work, um, which you know helps people notice you out there, right? Especially if you're looking for a job. All right, thank you so much, Louise. Okay, uh, Z. Oh, I love these icons, Z. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, she has inspiration here, so I'm going to open up these ones. Z created a series of icons, look like a book. I love that. Uh, this little mouse icon. And what I, what I like about these as I look at them, I, I'm thinking of the different challenges Z might have ran into uh, in creating these, like this little curved icon or this curved line, that could be challenging to create in PowerPoint or this curved page. Those little details really matter. Um, so I have Envato Elements open. There's a lot of discussion in the community about Envato Elements uh, lately. But even if you don't get a subscription to Envato Elements, it's a great place to get inspiration. Um, and so Z got her inspiration from these icons, which is hilarious because I'm pretty sure I have these icons open somewhere here in one of my tabs. Uh, I have no idea. But what I oftentimes do is if I'm looking to create my own set of icons, I might come out here. And really what you want to look for are icons that are flat in style. Those are going to be easier to create in PowerPoint. And you can see, I think Z did a really great job uh, mimicking uh, the style here. These outlines are a little bit thicker, but still uh, it, it looks fantastic. I love that. I'll talk about getting inspiration and, and all that stuff here a little bit. The other thing too, I'll mention a lot of folks, uh, if you come out in the challenge, a lot of people shared their PowerPoint files. So feel free to download those if you want to reverse engineer 
what some people did. All right, so Jacob, he created a series of icons for the biotech company he works at. Uh, and what I really liked is he created icons for things and graphics that he wasn't able to find out you know, in different marketplaces. So he created his own set of custom icons for things like a bioreactor, whatever the heck that is, or I can't even say that word over here, cryovile. Um, I don't even know what that is, but these are really cool icons. I love these, right? Um, and these icons as well, like contemporaneous. Uh, and this is a good, this is actually a really, um, one of the things I like about icons, I've talked about this before, uh, icons have this really unique ability from a graphic design or a visual communication standpoint to have universal meaning and adaptable meaning. Like there's some icons that you see like the shape of a stop sign. We all know what that means. You'd recognize it even at, without the word stop, right? Um, and so they have those universal meanings, but icons can also have adaptable meanings. So like, for example, if you, if you told me this is contemporaneous, well, great. I'm going to adopt that meaning in whatever it's being used in, right? So as long as you're consistent uh, and you give it meaning, like accurate, uh, or original, right? These are some interesting ways to give meaning to icons that otherwise wouldn't have meaning. And that's what I love about them is they're adaptable in their meaning and your audience, your learners will uh, adopt that, that meaning, whatever you tell them it is, as long as you're consistent with it, right? These are awesome. Thanks, Jacob. Okay, Ethan, Ethan jumped in and I think these are the, there's actually quite a few fun icons like this, but these are uh, perhaps the most original ones uh, being inspired by uh, Nintendo. I love these simple color palette. I mean, really you have three colors, one of them with a couple different shades, right? Uh, and what I really like about these is the unique, again, I don't know what to call it, like the foundation of the icon, this kind of, um, what's the word, isometric square in the background, I love that. Uh, and I don't know, did you create these as well, Ethan? These graphics up here, the Nintendo? Yes, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I love that here. Very good. Thanks, Ethan. I'm sure you had a lot of fun copying and pasting all these little lines to create the sprinkles and lining up all these little squares. All right, that's good use of a line and distribute there. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. All right, Lindsay did some vegetable icons. Okay, I have to say, uh, one of the things I always appreciate um, when I'm looking at graphics, and especially in things like PowerPoint, um, are small attentions to detail and creative uses of other shapes. So one of the things I really appreciated in Lindsay's icons was the use of these very, very subtle gradients. Uh, you see the eggplant has the gradient here, the celery has a gradient here. Um, I think that's about all you see it. But here's the other thing that I really love. So somebody pointed this out. I didn't even notice it. You look at the carrot graphic and you look at the leaves. Those are the speech bubble shapes in PowerPoint. <laughs> you know, that's such a creative use of, uh, of one shape that would be used for an, or same thing with the broccoli, speech bubbles, right? But used in a totally different context. I love that. That's hilarious. And these look awesome. That's very creative, Lindsay. Thank you for sharing. All right, continuing on, let's keep going through all the comments. All right, so Melissa, uh, PowerPoint is the OG of designing. I agree with that. <laughs> okay, she did four screen gray and I don't even know, mauve, mo I don't even know how you say that, but uh, created some different uh, icons, virtual team meeting, cups. I, can't, I don't know why I can't pronounce that color. These are awesome. They're a bit more muted colors, but again, like you could easily change these out and use them in different contexts, however you might need them. And these ones, uh, what's nice about these is these are really basic in shapes. Like you look at the person here or these people here or the computer here, it's just a square in a circle, right? Like you don't have to get horribly complex with the amount of shapes that you use to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish uh, with creating the icon. All right, thanks, Melissa. Okay, Christy McKinney. Christy McKinney created some different uh, icons, technology icons, teaching icons. Um, I love the color palette here with the blue and the gray. Uh, this is a great example. She used, I forget what this is called. Um, it's not a bevel or a bezel. I can't remember what the difference between the two is, but it gives it this nice 3D effect. 
Here's an in, inner drop shadow. I can show that in PowerPoint. That makes it look like it's almost been like cut out uh, with the way the light shines on it. So I like the, the simple 3D effect of these. Uh, thanks, Christy. And they very much match your, your little logo icon here as well. All right, Justine created some simple food icons, a menu, a burger, and a pizza. Again, this is a great example where if you look at some of these shapes like this hamburger, or these lines and how they intersect with one another. That you know, they're very, very simple icons, but I can see that there's you know some really good technique either with layering of the shapes or how you might have had to edit the points to get that, which I really appreciate about these ones, Justine. Okay, Kayla. Ooh, these ones are fun. You know what? I wouldn't. I, these. What I like about these ones is I. Obviously, they're basic shapes, but I wouldn't I wouldn't have assumed that they were created in PowerPoint. Uh, these look like almost like something you would get off in Vato Elements. Uh, what I really, really like is the color palette here and just the simplicity of these different icons. Like, I'm curious now what this one is. I haven't, I've been looking at this one. Does anyone have any idea or guesses what this one is? Or uh, Justine or Kayla, sorry, if you're here, what is this one? Does anyone have any thoughts? It looks like a like an egg chair almost, a time machine portal, a bug. Like it looks like you're looking at an egg chair, like you would sit in it. Oh, maybe it's an eye, yeah. I guess they're all medical related, so it's probably something like that. I don't know, sonogram mouse, I don't know. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, and these little dots, you know, I who knows what the meaning might be behind them or how they could be used, but they add a nice little visual texture to them. Very good, Kayla, thank you for sharing. Okay, Stacy did some icons uh, for you know maps and is that a, it's time or a compass, notebook. Uh, I like this one. This one is, um, it, I think it's a map. It's a simple little map icon uh, when I look at the rest of these. Uh, and I love the color palette. And again, there's a lot of opportunity to switch out the different colors. Um, uh, to have some variety, especially like this flag icon. This isn't a great, great example of, um, I think this might be a built-in shape in PowerPoint. We can take a look, but, uh, or you might've had to edit the curves, but either way, I like it. All right. Now these ones are interesting uh, from Teresa. Uh, when I looked at these, they almost, they looked like they were in like sideways, um, like a Petri dish almost, you know what I mean? Like they're almost like they look like they're embedded in some sort of uh, shape or something. Either way, like I love the 3D effect, the 3D effect of these, these are interesting. I like them, I like how you can stack them up. Uh, and I didn't know, I didn't know you could still do 3D text in PowerPoint. They must still have that hidden there somewhere. I'll have to check that out. All right, let's continue on. I have no idea how many more we have. All right, so Jerry shared some icons. Oh, what I like about these ones, and I don't know, this might have been using the 3D effect in PowerPoint. I don't, I'd have to see how you did that, but I like how these look like, at least they look like, and maybe it's just the effect of it being offset with the, the shadow here. Like they're almost three, they look like they've been pivoted a little bit, which I think is really cool. Uh, I could see those being used in the course. And some of them have more detail. We have a kidney. I think that's a kidney. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, and this looks like, oh yes, because you know what? Jerry works in dialysis. So that would make sense, right? Here's dialysis. This one's way more intricate. Um, and this one almost looked like a robot, but now that I'm looking at it, I can see uh, what the different components are. Probably like a dialysis machine or something. Very good. Thank you, Jerry. All right, so Ridvan did some educational icons. I'll go ahead and download these as well, see if there were a couple more in there, or it might have been just the four. Uh, great color palette, great simplicity. I love these uh, just based off the simplicity of itself. Uh, I could see creating a whole template around these colors, um, and I love how some of the icons are more detailed versus the others. Very good. Thank you, Ridvan. All right. Okay, Wendy did some, again, some simple icons here, paintbrush, pencil, search and measure. It's a good example, again, using some align and distributing, using some 3D effect, uh, makes it, gives it some good visual texture. I love these. Thanks, Wendy. Okay. Uh, Jacqueline did some puppy icons. These are really cool uh, because they're, 
I feel like these go beyond like basic shapes, even though they are basic shapes and these almost look like uh, illustrations, right? Uh, and this reminded me, I shared this, uh, I might've posted this. I shared this with Jacqueline. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Um, I used to work for uh, an old boss of mine, uh, Diane Elkins. She's the owner of Artists and E-Learning and E-Learning Uncovered, um, uh, which was the source of the video I shared in the post. But uh, Diane Elkins actually wrote a children's book uh, and designed the entire children's book and illustrated it in PowerPoint. And I'll open it up here. I linked to it. It's called If I Were a Cow. Um, and I use this all the time to, I have a copy of it, um, but I always use it whenever I'm talking about PowerPoint. I always love to share how, um, you know, and it's a really simple book and these are really simple illustrations, but how you could literally, you know, design an entire book using PowerPoint shapes, right? And it reminded me of that. Uh, and I think I told Jacqueline, you know, I could see this, like, you could totally turn this into like a little cartoon uh, or a little children's book. These are fun. I love these. I love the weird quirkiness of each of them and the, the different, um, the way everything's a little bit uh, asymmetrical, if you will. All right. Thanks, Jacqueline. All right. Rachel did some beach icons, fun icons. We have sunglasses, a hat, a bottle, I don't know, suntan, a clock. Either way, these are fun. I love the colors. Nice, subtle 3D effects used on them. Makes them pop. These are fun and simple. Thank you, Rachel. All right, uh, Jennifer, her inspiration was so interesting. Just like um, before with Nintendo, we have Powerpuff Girls uh, for the colors, which were hilarious. You know, you could probably even, as I look at these Powerpuff Girl characters, you could probably even recreate these in PowerPoint with how simple the lines are. Um, but I love that uh, we went beyond just the icons here, but we also have some different like graphic elements like the search bar a printer, um, whatever the heck that is, right? Or whatever these are, you know? Like maybe use these for feedback in a course. I don't know. Communication. I love these. And that's a great example. Like if you start with an icon, then maybe you take the icon and you start going beyond that and creating actual custom graphics um, and see what you can do with that. All right. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay. Uh, Dina Francisco. Uh, who is just building her portfolio and is at dinafrancisco.com. I had to convince her the other day that dinafrancisco.com is a totally fine and easy to remember domain name. So uh, make sure if you run into Dina, let her know that you love her domain name because I think it's fine. Uh, she created some uh, different icons here. Again, very simple, uh, a, like a clipboard checklist, computer phone, um, virtual learning icon, very interesting um, uh, color palette here. Like I wouldn't expect this, but I think they look fantastic. Uh, and these are awesome. Thank you, dinafrancisco.com. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Rihanna did some, okay, I like these. Rihanna just posted these four hours ago. Uh, and this is a really interesting use of like the outline here, right? Like she wanted to create some quilting icons and I love the, some of these are actually really quite detailed. Like I would be, you know, this the spool here and this uh, here with the line are really cool and the teddy bear, but like the dotted outline really, really drives home the, um, uh, the, the quilting effect, right? They almost look like patches within them, themselves. You know, little instructional ones. Press your foot down. Very good. I love these. Thank you, Rihanna. All right. And then Emma, I think was our last submission so far. Emma, um, school is canceled due to freezing temperatures. Good for you. And so you worked on some icons. Okay. I'm working on a Spotify's Work From Anywhere hybrid initiative. Very cool. And it looks like you got inspiration from these graphics and you created this. I love that. That's fantastic. Um, and I love that you created a little computer scene. I could see this being an e-learning course uh, as a screen and maybe you're presenting some information here. Uh, and I love how you, like even these subtle shadows here using multiple shapes to create that it really uh, looks similar to here. Very good. All right. I think that was all of the submissions we received. I think there were a couple more that people put on LinkedIn. I don't know if they posted here. Either way, I gosh, I, I just loved uh, all the submissions we got this month. So let me, uh, what I'm gonna do is take some time. What time is it? We have, oh, it's only, we're only 25 minutes in. I wanna take some time to share how I've created icons in the past um, and where I get inspiration from. 
Um, as Z shared, you know, she gets a she got her inspiration from Invato Elements. And even like I said, even if you don't uh, plan on using Invato Elements, even if you come out and you look at graphics like this and start looking at what I always like to do is I like to look at just the shapes being used. Like, don't look at the whole graphic because that'll get you overwhelmed, right? But like, look at the shapes and go, how could I possibly recreate some of this? And before you know it, you can really easily start creating your own graphics. Most of these, you might have to adapt them a little bit, but you could easily create your own graphics. These types of graphics, you know, you may not be able to create all of these little nuanced details, but you could get pretty close if you were trying to create something like this in PowerPoint. I'll show you some examples here in a moment. These ones as well, like I could easily create that in PowerPoint. The people, these have a little bit more complex line work going on, but you could create those. Again, cybersecurity. That one would be really hard to do because of the curves. But actually, you could do it with some circles, actually, and, 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 and break the points. These are very simple. I'll show you a technique. I have something I want to show with, like, these... Um, uh, dollar signs and other characters and it's a cool technique in PowerPoint. These ones would probably be more complex, but even though they're simple shapes. So I got started creating, um, I don't remember, years ago I was doing, uh, and I still do it occasionally, and I, we have an upcoming webinar on it. Um, years ago, I used to go to these conferences uh, around when we were still doing conferences in person, and I would always do uh, a workshop called PowerPoint for Graphic Design. I think that's where I got started with this. And years before I started the eLearning Designers Academy and I started freelancing, I had this little hobby website called PowerPointIcons.com. You can still go to it. I don't, I have not updated it since like 2017. Um, and by all means, don't, you can pay for the icons, but please don't. I'll, I'll gladly give anyone these icons for free because I don't do this anymore. But I created this little website called PowerPointIcons.com. And my thought process was, was like, oh, I'm going to create icons and share them for people to download, kind of like its own little Invato elements. And I created all these different little icons. Um, and this is where I really kind of got started. I, I think I was just playing on a Saturday. Oh, you know what I was doing, actually, now that I remember it, I was creating a gamified storyline demo where I did, needed my own icons. And I think this was before Invato elements existed. And so I created these icons in PowerPoint. Uh, and I just, I'm, you know, here's some science icons. These ones are a little bit, this one was really complex. Um, business graph icons. These ones are fun. These were the first icons I think I created. These are really basic uh, comparatively, right? And then I also started creating like these ribbons, you know, using basic shapes. So I thought what I would do is I'm gonna create, let me pick which one I wanna show. Um, I'm kind of liking the science icons. These are simple, but let's do the gamification ones. These ones are more complex. Like, um, I'll sh let me just copy this. I'm going to copy this. Let's go into PowerPoint. I'll show you how I would do this. This is something I always do. Like if I'm creating icons or I'm, I'll copy, if I'm taking inspiration from something, not copying, but taking inspiration, I might copy and paste it in here just to get the color palette going. And some people posted about this, like how do you get the colors in here? And this is something I do frequently is I use the eyedropper tool. So if you go to like shape fill and in, in uh, the Windows version of PowerPoint, I believe the eyedropper tool is right here in the, in the drop down. but on a Mac, I have to do more fill colors and then you have the eyedropper tool and it allows you to sample a color. So I usually sample the palette from there. Get that all in here. So let me do that real quickly here. What's nice is once you sample it, it starts showing up in the recent color. So you don't have to use that anymore as you work on it. Let's do, I got the, uh, orange, Again, let's get the yellow. Let's just do like that yellow. And let's get the blue color here. Okay, we'll start there. If I need more colors, I can get more colors. So let's do, uh, what one do I want to do here? I kind of like the rocket. Either way, usually what I start off by doing is I start off with some sort of foundation 
And I might or may not use this in the actual final icons. I'll start with a circle one, and I'm just gonna start creating it here. Um, and we will do, let me actually sample that dark color. Actually, I'll use like this off black color here. I'll do a little less. Turn off the outline. And uh, you'll notice here, if I zoom in, uh, there's a couple different ways I can do this like orange outline. What I typically prefer to do is I usually like to have it as two separate shapes. And here's why. If I were to shape format and do the outline here, let's say I were to do the outline as this orange color and then make it much thicker, right? Like, like make it six points. You'll notice that if I make the icon smaller, it still stays at that six points and then that doesn't work anymore, right? So what I usually like to do if I'm doing um, something where I wanna have an outline like this orange, I will turn off the outline on the actual shape and I will create a separate icon or a separate shape and we'll do a fill of like this orange and I'm gonna make it slightly larger than the one behind it. I'll send it to the back and We'll use our align tools to align them both in the center. And now if I were to group this in this instance, the, I guess the ratio to the outline to the shape still stays, right? Because I'm actually resizing two different shapes. Now, another quick tip, whenever you are um, working or creating graphics in PowerPoint is to open up the selection pane. Uh, and I don't know if you know what the selection pane is, but it's the, like the most powerful tool hidden in plain sight in PowerPoint. Um, I, I'm sure many of you are familiar with um, the, you know, how the, if for those of you who use Storyline or even though for those of you who use Captivate, when you're working in the timeline, you know how you can toggle on and off the visibility of different items with little eyes. You can do the same thing in PowerPoint. Uh, it's hidden though. So if I go to the Arrange tool on the Home tab, I'm on Home, go to Arrange, at the very, very bottom, there's this thing called the selection pane. Uh, and I don't know why PowerPoint or Microsoft chooses to hide it, but they do. So I'll click that. And I usually keep this opened. And what this allows me to do is it allows me not only to rename items or shapes, but it also allows me to toggle on the visibility of them. And it also allows me to adjust the stacking order. Um, and so for example, you know, this is my picture here. If I click on this, there's my rectangles but here's my different ovals, right? So I can say this is my outline and then this is the, you know, I don't know, the, the fill. Uh, and I can toggle on and off the visibility independently of anything here. What I wish you could do, what's not available is to lock items so you don't mess it up. And I can also drag things around. So if I wanna put the outline and top of the fill, I can do that here. So this allows me to organize things. If I group items, right click, group, group the photo, it creates little groups that you can open and clap. So I can call this my you know, icon base. It's like working with layers like you would have in Illustrator or Photoshop or like working with the timeline in uh, Storyline, right? So that's my icon. Uh, I hope that blows people's minds. That's my favorite tip to show people because so few people know about it. So if I taught you one thing, it's the selection pane, but I'll teach you some other cool stuff. All right, so let's do, um, let's do the rocket. I like the rocket. I was looking at a different one, hold on. No, let's, I like the, yeah, let's do the rock. No, I'm gonna do the badge just for time because I wanna show a bunch of other cool things. So if I like to do a badge, this is not a shape that I have in my shapes panel, right? I could, one of the nice things, I believe this is only available, I'm not 100% sure, for people who are using PowerPoint or Office 360 is the icons. And this is something that uh, is recently new to PowerPoint. And there's nothing wrong that if you're creating icons, like start here and see if you can adapt it. So let's just see, I'm still gonna create it from scratch, but I just wanna see what is available out here. So you could use like the checklist, like, you know, you don't have to create everything from scratch, right? So let's say I wanted, if I can cl click on it. Well, I'll go to my selection pane. There we go. Nope. Let's just do this. Make it bigger and make it easier. What is going on with my computer? 
All right, let's deselect everything. Click that. It's not letting me resize it. Oh, did I group it? Oh, wait, hold on. No. Let's move that way out of the way. There we go. I don't know what was going on there. So you can put that on there, maybe do a white outline. You have an icon, right? You can use those shapes. It took me a long time to get there. I apologize, but you get my point. Okay, so I don't have a shape for the badge. So, you know, maybe I could find it here. So let's create it from scratch. So if I do insert shape, what I usually look for is I look for something that's similar to the shape that I want to create that I can adapt, right? And so if I look at all these different shapes here, um, the one that I think, and this is probably where I can't remember who got the flag icon was the wave. I love that. Um, there's some shapes here, but I'm looking at, uh, what's this one called? I have no idea. It's the plaque. Okay. Let's go with that. Right. So I'm going to draw my plaque here and I'm just going to keep it this blue color for now. I'll change colors later. I'm just making the actual shape here. Right. And most shapes, you know, a shape like this, you can adjust, I don't know what you want to call that, the little uh, the scalloped edge. I don't need to mess with any of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the shape here. And this is where you can edit the points. And this is where uh, PowerPoint starts operating more like um, Adobe Illustrator. Uh, most of the things that you're doing in Adobe Illustrator with custom graphics are just editing points just like this. These are uh, Bezier curves to be more um specific right and so what these allow me to do to actually edit the shape so i'm looking at this one over here as my inspiration and so i have the top i have you know each of these little i'll call them the scalloped edges but i want to create you know how they come down to a singular point so what i can do is i can right click and delete points or open the path so i don't need that point so i'm going to delete it i don't and you'll see how it automatically adjusts the shape i don't need let's actually delete this one, because ultimately it just needs to come down to a single point, right? So I'm going to delete this one here as well. Now this looks nothing like what I need, uh, but I can move this around. So I'm going to try my best to move this here in the center. And you'll see these handles jetting out from the, um, uh, I forget what this is called, the hand, the, you know, the point. Uh, and I can adjust this. And this takes some, you know, fancy um, uh, mouse work or trackpad work, but the more you play with it, the more you can get the shape you're looking for. So I'm going to bring this in and bring this in. And I like how it kind of, on this part, it kind of comes in like that, make it a little fancier, right? And if I click out of it, there's my new shape, right? There, I have a badge. Uh, and now let's do our colors, right? So let's do, I have three colors here. So um, let's do shape fill. I'm just going to start with the green fill and uh, do no outline. And I'm going to duplicate it. And let's do the white middle. So I'll just make this white. And then let's do one more. Copy and paste. Do Control-C, Control-V, and we'll do the orange. Right. Um, and I can layer them on top of one another and then make them slightly smaller if I want to. And the challenge with shapes with curves like this is it's never going to be perfect. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right. But let's just put it like that. And I can kind of warp it to make it feel better than it is. That's a, you know, a formal graphic design term, feel better than it is. There's this great quote. I can't remember. I always forget the name of whoever said it. You have to excuse my language. There's this great quote uh, by a famous graphic designer. I believe he's mostly known for creating like movie posters. He said 90% of graphic design is moving shit around on the screen until it looks right. And that is very much true. <laughs> like that's all I'm doing is just moving stuff around until it looks right. Um, now these stars, this is simple, right? These are... Um, uh, I can just use these if I don't want to create them from scratch. So I'm just going to put in some shapes there. Give it a white fill, no outline. And there you go. I can stop there. We have a badge. The other thing I like to do, um, you'll notice these have this sort of 
kind of, it looks like a drop shadow as is 3D effect. I'll show you how I did that. That's simple. Uh, I'm just going to, let me ungroup the background. And um, this is a simple little effect. If I want to give it kind of a 3D feel. Uh, let me choose, let's see what kind of color we want to use for this. We'll just use this like blue color, right? And I'm going to send this to the back, right click, send the back. And I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to use my arrow key and I'm just going to make it a little bit offset, right? It's really just two shapes offset, but it kind of gives it that 3D effect. Or another, a better way to do it is to take the same orange color uh, and maybe do it as a darker orange. So I'm going to just, um, oh, where is my color? There we go. I just make it slightly dark, or darker orange until I have some contrast there, right? Very cool. Now, uh, one thing I wanna mention, one of the cool things about, um, for those of you who use Storyline, uh, within however recently, one of the newer versions of Storyline, Storyline now allows you to edit uh, or import, doesn't allow you to edit yet, but allows you to import SVG graphics. So when you create a series of icons like this, if I were to group this as one shape, right? I can right click and I can save this as a picture. And if I wanted to, I can save it as a PNG, which will make it, um, you know, like a have a transparent background. And I'll put this on my desktop and I'll call this my badge icon. Right? PNGs are great, but even PNGs still, uh, you can only make them so large. So let me just open this up here. Still pretty good, high quality graphic, right? Or the other thing you can do is you can export it, if I can find PowerPoint again here, as an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic, which means that you can make it as large as you want and it'll retain, um, it won't get pixelated. So if I do save this picture and I can save it as an SVG, we'll call this my badge, get that to my desktop. Now, just to demonstrate this real quickly, Oh, and see, it's opening up in Illustrator because Illustrator, uh, let me qu quit that. That's not what I meant to do. But actually, it kind of makes me want to do something here. Can I not open it up in preview? Maybe I can't. Okay, well, we'll open it up in Illustrator. What the heck? Uh, launch Illustrator. Um, and while I'm doing this, I have a webinar, a how to webinar, I can't remember when, on how to edit graphics in Illustrator. So feel free to check that out uh, on the events page. Okay, let's get this opened here. I'm just going to put this in Illustrator just to make my point. Uh, and if I drag my SVG in here, the following items cannot be imported. Clipping will be lost on a round trip to Tiny. I have no idea what that means. Oh, but it worked. Um, okay, so here's my graphic, right? Now, SVG, scalable vector graphic, you'll notice no matter how far I zoom in, it does not lose it's quality, that's what an SVG is, right? And if I wanted to, uh, you can see here, I can actually edit this in um, Illustrator. And that's another cool thing to be aware of, is if you download Adobe Illustrator graphics and you don't feel comfortable editing them in Adobe Illustrator, if you happen to be using Envato Elements, a lot of the Envato Elements graphics, if I can open them up here, if I go to Envato Elements, uh, a lot of the graphics, let's just go do like icons, not all of them, but a lot of them will have SVGs uh, included as part of it. ESP, JPEG, these don't, but if you look around, and I think there's a way you can filter for file type, um, you'd have to play with it, right? But even then, you could put it into Illustrator, export it as an SVG, and then bring it into PowerPoint to edit it. Um, which I've done before, if you don't feel comfortable editing in Adobe Illustrator, right? So SVG makes things way more compatible and easy. Okay, so let me show another cool tip in PowerPoint. Um, let's just take the same icon. Let me duplicate this slide. I'm going to get rid of this, uh, and let's ungroup this. The other thing I like to do... Um, is there's different ways, let me group this whole thing actually, so I can use this. So now I have the foundation. There's a lot of different things you can do to create new shapes by the way things intersect with one another. So one of the things I like to do is if I'm creating, let's say, I don't have one here, but let's say I wanted to create 
um, like a money icon or a dollar figure or some sort of text. Maybe I want it to be a letter, right? Uh, what I've seen people do in the past is that they insert a text box. And let's say I want to do like a monogram. I don't know why I'm going to do that. Let's do t.s. That's my monogram, right? And we'll make it a fancy font. Let's find a really cool fancy font. Let's do DM serif, whatever that is. I'll make it way larger, right? I've seen people do this before where they'll, they'll, they'll take text and they'll format text and they'll just put the text here on top, right? The problem with doing this though is that if I even if I group this, it all looks fine, but if I resize it, it doesn't resize the font, right? If I make this smaller, it, the font still says whatever size I wanted. It doesn't treat it like a vector graphic or an editable graphic, but I can actually convert text into graphics here. So if I ungroup all of this and I take my text here, I'm gonna put it, I'll put that over there and let me make this, doesn't matter what color, let's just turn it back to black, right? What I can do is I can use my, my intersect tool, so I'll show you what that means here in a moment, to actually turn this into um, editable shapes in PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a shape, and it doesn't matter what shape it is, I'm just going to put a square here. And I believe, I might be wrong about this because it's been a while since I've done this, I believe it has to be behind the text, but I might be wrong here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to select both of these things. I have the text box with the TS and my shape. And you'll notice there's this merge, merge shapes option. And this allows you, I'll show you another use of this here in a moment, but this allows you to combine different shapes. And I believe it's fragment almost essentially takes the TS and it like punches out the shapes through the shape. Let's see if it works. Yes, it did. Okay. Now it changed the color. That's okay. But what I can do is if I delete that now, now these are their own shapes. And I can group them. They're not editable text anymore. It just essentially cut it out as a shape. And I can group it. And now I can put it on here. We'll give it this blue color. Oops, let's try that one more time. It's not a text. That's what I was doing wrong there. Give it the blue color. And now I have an actual editable shape. And if I were to put this in here, make it smaller, I'm having issues with my trackpad. Let's group this. It's not letting me group it. Why is it not letting me group? There we go. Nope. Group. Okay, finally. Now, if I make this bigger or smaller, it, it adjusts accordingly because now it's just a shape. So you can actually do this with all sorts of things, whether it's... Um, if I put in a shape here uh, and type in anything, you know, any particular font uh, you can use. The other thing I've done before, I haven't done this in a long time, uh, you can go into like wingdings and um, insert a symbol, not these symbols. Where do I find my wingding symbols? There we go. It's a little different on a Mac. Um, but you can find them in here. And let's say I wanted to create this crown. That's very fitting for my icons, right? I have a crown in there. I'll show it one more time. I'll make this way bigger. All right? So this is a text icon like wingdings. Let me move this out of the way. And now if I insert a shape and put this over it, and select both of those and go to my shape format, merge shapes. I'm gonna fragment it. It cuts it out. Let me delete that. And let me zoom in here. And if I wanna delete some of these other little icons or shapes in here, I can do that. a moment. That's fine. Okay, there we go. Now I have a whole new shape. I can make it whatever color. Maybe I'll make it this gold color. Turn off the outline. And now I have a new custom. Oops. Let's just ungroup this. You know, shape. There's a crown icon. 
So those are some of the cool things you can do in PowerPoint. I have a whole bunch of other tips and I'll be doing that in a future how-to webinar. So I think we'll stop there. What other questions do you all have or anything else I can share while we're here? Feel free to put that in the chat. Yeah, Leanne, PowerPoint is amazing. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not um, a capable tool. It's more capable than I think more people give it credit for. I, I will mention this too real quickly, just for the heck of it. Uh, this really has nothing to do with icons, but if you're looking to you know further your graphic design skills or play with some interesting graphics, again, if, I believe it's only available if you have Office 365, um, which I think most people do, but I have no idea. So if you do new from template, uh, in PowerPoint, let me see if I can find them here. It's not these templates. Is it the home tab? Where is it? Is it shared? No. Not themes. All right, let me go. Hold. Is it this drop down? No. Give me one moment. Is it open? New presentation. Not that. <laughs> New from template. Maybe it's that, did I already click that though? I swear there is a place in PowerPoint. Uh, is it up here now? No, 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 shared, open. Let me close this. I think I have to quit PowerPoint to do it. Don't save it. Let's do PowerPoint. There's a place where you can download all sorts of like infographic templates and all of that stuff. And let's just search infographic. Does that come up? No. I don't know where I'm not seeing it. Yeah, Ethan, I agree with Bright Carbon. Okay, hold on. I got to Google this. Uh, infographic templates PowerPoint. It's like they hit it there. Infograph, not Google Slides. Use PowerPoint infographic templates, right? Yeah. This is what I'm trying to find. Uh, bring your ideas to life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get my, I already have it. So tell me how to do it. I'll have to look this up again. Oh, here we are. Themes. I don't know why it didn't show up. Okay. So when you're on, if you search infographic, there's all sorts of like built-in uh, icons and stuff in here with Office 365. If you just do a search, where am I at? How did I get to that? I did themes, more themes. You do more themes, infographic. I don't know why they hide this stuff. Um, like here, I'll, I'll just download this one. I don't know. But they have tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff out there, right? Here's a whole bunch of stuff, and these are all editable. The other thing, I guess while I'm here, in case anyone's curious to know with Office 365, um, if you do insert, where is it at? Is it icons? No, it's stock images. Right, okay, you see how I came to these icons, right? There's actually a whole library of stock images. A lot of them are cheesy, some of them are good, but if you click in the drop down, they also have stickers, again, cheesy, um, but I believe most of them are editable. There's also illustrations um, that you can download. Those are all editable, but the other cool thing is, is there's also cutout people. Um, there's also a whole library of cutout people that if you uh, you know don't have storyline or you want some additional cutout people, they don't have a good search system for it, uh, but they have different characters and you know um, you can insert some cutout people and then you know if you wanted to save it as a PNG. All right, PowerPoint's pretty freaking cool. Okay, uh, Teresa wants to. Can you show how to put uh, a cutout person? Oh, inside an oval, like uh, like have their face inside of it. Yes, I can do that. Let's do that real quickly. Let me uh, close all this stuff. We have about six minutes left here. Don't save. Let me close this. Let me open up a brand new PowerPoint. Um, okay. Delete. I don't need, I hate the placeholder stuff that's always there. Okay, so this is a cool little technique. So if I want to, let's insert a cutout character first. Let's find our characters here. And um, I don't know, we'll put this person, whoever that is. Um, and let's say I wanted to insert, let's say I wanted to put this individual in this round circle. I don't like the default blue color, so let's do something different like, I don't know, this nice green color. 
uh, unless I wanted to put it in there. The challenge is, here's what you don't want. Let me bring the front. You don't want to zoomed in on a really awkward area there. I apologize. <laughs> okay. So what you don't want is you don't want to crop the person like this. You know, that doesn't look right, right? So what I'm going to do instead is uh, if I want to make it in a circle like this, the first thing I need to do is I need to make this person in, into a, cropped into a perfect square. And I'll explain why here in a moment. So if I do shape and I do a square here, I'm just going to draw a square. And uh, I'll put it here. And it may not be perfect. Oh, and let me come down here. And actually, let me do this. I want to I want to line it up with the, the shape perfectly. So I'm going to line this to the left and align this to the top. And let me adjust this so it lines right up. OK, there we go. And now I'm going to crop this. And that is not a perfect square anymore, is it? Uh, so let's do this. 6.2. I meant to do this. There we go. I think it's lined up with the edge of it. Yeah, there we go. Now what I'll do is I'm going to crop her according to that square. So now I've essentially cropped her graphic uh, into a perfect square, this individual's graphic. What I'm going to do is picture format, and now I'm going to crop to shape and crop as a circle. And it's taken it and it's made it a circle. It, doesn't kind, of, it kind of looks like it. You can see on the bottom. You may not see it up here. But now if I bring this person to the front, And I can align it with the graphic. And I might need to make the individual a little smaller to fit into the square. But there you go. I'd have to continue playing with it. But I hope that helps uh, Teresa. And the reason I cropped the individual to the square first rather than just cropping to a shape is it would have cropped it as a big oval rather than a shape. So that's why I did that first. All right, very good. Well, thank you all so much for attending this week's uh, or this month's Community Challenge Recap. That's a mouthful. Like I said at the beginning, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell button to get alerted when we publish more stuff like this. And of course, you can check out the link in the description for this Community Challenge, our future Community Challenges, and our future Community Events. Thank you all so much for attending and participating, and I'll see you all around. Bye, everybody.